In this video, I want to show you some of the different options that you have when it comes to versioning your Power BI reports. I'm going to show you how to do version control using OneDrive, SharePoint, and Dropbox, as well as using something more sophisticated like the GitHub repositories and why you should use them in the first place. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So version control, if you didn't know already, is just a way to manage a product when you want to say add new features or make some modifications to it when it's released. So let's say so let's say you created a Power BI report that you released to your clients. This would be version one of your reports. When you released it, you found some bugs that you might want to fix and also some requests that you got from your clients. So now you created a new version of the same reports and re-released it back to your clients. Now this will be version two because it's the exact same product but with just the modifications that happened in between the release. And not having the ability to do version control for your reports can have a significant impact especially if you release a report that doesn't work. So from our example, let's say your V2 product that you released had a lot of bugs and problems that needs to be fixed. This means that you have to spend some time to fix the product. However, while you're fixing it, your clients have a defective product that they can't use. However, with proper version control, you can simply roll back to a version of your product that is stable and that works. This stable version is what you can give to your clients in the meantime while you fix the problems underneath your new version. Now, while you can manage version control manually by creating V1, V2, of the same Power BI file. There are tools out there that makes it a lot easier for you to work with this concept. So let me just show you a couple of them. So the first one is versioning using OneDrive. Now, if you use it to store files, it inherently supports versioning, either you're using personal or the business version. So in essence, when you replace a file, OneDrive creates a version of it and you can access the different versions by simply right clicking on any files. So here, for example, I have OneDrive personal installed into my machine here. If you right click on, let's say this uh, report here, you'll see that you have the option version history. If you click that, it shows you the different versions of this report every time you replace it. So at the moment we only have one, but every time you replace this with a new file, it creates a new log here in the version history of you know how many times you've done it, uh, when you've done it, and who was it done by. What it also does is it allows you to access those different versions so you can download them if you need to. So here on the ellipsis, you can open it and access it. And this option will be available for you for the different versions of this file in this version history. So again, as I said, in order to add new versions to this file, all you need to do is simply replace the file and the version will be automatically stored for you. The next one is versioning using SharePoint. Now, I use this versioning quite a lot because I store most of my data sources in SharePoint. And if you wanna know how to do that, I actually have a video covering the different ways that you can use SharePoint as a source. So check that video out if you haven't yet. So anyway, you can do this for any file in your SharePoint site. So here we have uh, some folders with some data that we want to version. And uh, for you to access, let's say the version of this grocery sales file that I have here. Again, you simply go to the ellipsis icon, go to version history, and it will give you a version history that looks a lot similar to the OneDrive, which gives you the lists of the different versions for this file. Who was it modified by, when, and any comments to that version. So the next one is versioning through Dropbox, which again is the exact same concept as the first two. You can store files in it, you can replace files within the Dropbox, and if you want to access the version history, you simply go to the ellipsis here, 
you go to version history and like the other versions it will give you a full version history of what has happened to that file and give you access to each of those versions the last one that i want you to think about as an option is github and if you're not familiar with github it's essentially used to deal with version controls and used primarily for versioning scripting codes and software development so in github you can simply create a project so in this case, I created one Power BI projects and you just simply upload your files here in this project folder. And every time you have a new file, you simply upload it into the project again. Now, GitHub seems to be a little bit more complicated than the rest of the uh, three different methods that I showed you. But why should you think about it in the first place? So first of all, you can add comments on the version history which means that anyone browsing your history, uh, the version history, immediately know what's changed in each version, as opposed to creating a different documentation for it. Another reason is that it allows you to create forks and branches to the main file that you have in the project. Now, this is useful if you're working with multiple teams where different people are responsible for different parts of the project, allowing you to work simultaneously in one project. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a bit more familiar with the different options that you have when it comes to dealing with version control and Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.